met a gypsy. Yeah, and, and Marquez is such a crazy example. Like right now, probably on the worst bike, and for sure, just prepared to die. Yeah, you know, like and that we talked about a little bit at breakfast, but mm. the Mandalika crash Huge. was me. Just I was, I felt terrible for him. Yeah, for a start because you could see that was a bike thing. Yeah, and I'm just like this fucking guy is willing to die to get this bike back up front and to and to win and it's just like you have to respect that and oh yeah and you know this year like he obviously there's been some pretty massive struggles as well you know like um when he took out uh blanking on the name at the start of the year on the um on the aprilia why am i blanking on the name not the factory aprilia espargaro no no no. who's vinales no the second team what was uh who would it be? Oliveira? Yeah, yeah, it was Oliveira. He mm-hmm. he took out Oliveira, and mm-hmm. it's like he got hammered. Yeah, by the like hammered, and it's like I get it, but also like just respect that the guys out there just absolutely giving it everything he can. Like, but you had that knows. that the you know you had the yellow fan base and the Marquez fan base, and yeah, it was true. just too easy for them obviously to go against Marquez. Um, but no, that's what I've been saying about him for the last kind of four years is if you look at what he's been through and, you know, he's been loyal to Honda and all that kind of stuff, the people that know, know, you know, f- most of his crashes in the past four years, they're, yeah, I mean, they're his fault cause he's going over the edge, yeah, but it's exactly. because the bike is not there yeah. and they're like, Oh, Mark, he's going to crash or he's all that's, he forgot how to ride. It's like, <laughs> where is anybody else on a Honda that's in his zip code? Nobody. Yeah. Like nobody. So And that's because they're not prepared, like mm-hmm. you said, yeah. to go to that extent. And like he got a podium on the weekend. Oh yeah. No, and that's why I'm I'm happy for him. You know, he's not a friend of mine or anything. I respect him, but I'm happy that he's getting on a bike that can win. Because in my eyes, with what he's been through and what he's done, what he's already achieved, but then what he's had to go through it's um you know he's he's paid his dues and it's like you know you've got a few years left and it'd be nice to see you know on a bike that you can have confidence on and you know go back for the win so i'm glad he you know made the move and he stuck with honda long time and it's been you know the people that understand how the development works with the japanese to the europeans and all the stuff they've kind of known that he's he's been stuck and he's probably most likely going to be stuck for a couple more years until they really think outside the box and, and change the bike. But, um, you know, he's just, he had a few years left and I think he made the the smartest move. And some people are like, Oh, he's, you know, he's getting paid 10 or $12 million from Honda and this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking if I'm putting myself in his shoes and I'm worth the money that he's worth $10 million to be back on a bike that can win, you're going to make more than that you know, going forward or at least the same. So it's, it's for him, it's not a money thing. I mean, he's got plenty of money. He just wants to be on a good bike again. And he knows that the way the development is with the Japanese, there's, there's no way that they'll have a bike, you know, next year that's competing with that Ducati. It's not going to happen. Oh, and just like afraid to die. Yeah. (laughs) You know, you just being on that bike and you've seen the crashes that he's, that he's had Mm -hmm. by, just trying like never say die yeah you know there there might not be i mean it's like mcdoan level shit you know just the ready to absolutely like pay the price to win the race and he and again he's shown that from the crashes he's shown it from when he wins but then he's also shown it where you know hey i don't have the pace but i'm still so i'm gonna follow you and qualifying and try to get a toe to be that much closer and that mentality, and I'll, I'll put Jack Miller into this, is where, you know, he followed Jack one time. And Jack just kind of made some jokes, and they had fun, and, and it didn't really mess with Jack too much. Other riders, it does, you know, and they get really pissed off about it and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, the mentality that they should be having at that level, I think, or at least how I would have been if I was riding in my prime, is that if I look back and I see Mark's on me or anybody's on me to follow me, and I feel good and I feel like I'm one with the bike and having no troubles, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do my qualifying lap with you behind me. And when we hit the checkered flag and we're done, I'm going to sit up and look back and I'm going to see that you either lost the front chasing me or I put 
half a second on you. Yeah. That's what it is, yeah. you know, and that's what you have to be thinking if you want to take people down like that or you want to be, you know, the ultimate kind of winner. And it's just some people have it, some people don't. But that's when it kind of gets to the nuts and bolts of like, you know, fuck it, I'm going to get it done. Like, I'm going to make it happen. Well, and you can just see the dudes, at least from, I mean, I've been around a lot of champions mm -hmm. and the guys that I know that become the best. Yeah. Everything's a competition. Yeah, no, I mean. Every every look <laughs> at a press conference, every word that gets said, every posture that you take when you're walking through pit lane, the way that your hair is, the shoes, the like, everything yeah. says winning. Yeah, and it's not always easy for people to be around, you know. Oh, no there's no way, doubt, man. you know. No. And that's why I've, there's a couple of my real close friends where it's like, I know how it used to be. And like we go, we'd go ride motocross like a few years ago. And at this point, you know, I'm not training that hard and I'm just going out and riding. I'm a normal person. Yeah. yeah and you're uh, back human again. Yeah, yeah. And it's like we're riding and, you know, I just, there was one, like I had this thought and we were just sitting there, you know, having Gatorades and sitting down. I was like, hey guys, you know, I'm sorry about like 10 years ago when I was kind of like, come on, let's ride. Like, come on, you yeah. know, let's go. Let, Cause you're not getting tired. And then now it's like, okay, like I'm not training. I'm not in that life all the time. I realize, like, okay, let's just kind of, let's have fun and, and be normal. And you realize how you used to be about it um, and how hard the sport is, you know, if you're not fully trained for it and doing all the stuff. Well, and, and like the level of selfishness that you have to have to be an athlete. Yeah. You know? I mean, you do. It's, like I said, some people can deal with it better and, and it, you know, some people it doesn't get translated, you know, to the other people in a, in a way, but no, you have to, I mean, if you're, if, if you're winning and you're wanting to win and that's what the goal is, I mean, it, you try not to be selfish about it, but you've got to put yourself first and yeah. you've got to ask for everything when it comes to like, you know, resting. I wasn't a big media person, you know, I always loved the media people in our team, but they, you know, every time, sometimes they come try to get a quote and I'm like, no, nah, I'm not even talking right now, yeah. you know, and I know it wasn't easy, but that's also what made me, me riding and I could stay focused like that. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.